Previously, we showed you research that found as many as 40% of boards are discussing merger each year, and that about 7% of organisations report they are actually undertaking a merger. We also mentioned that there are many reasons for an organisation to merge, such as to achieve growth, improve service quality, or to become financially viable. There are many books, articles, and free online resources available on the types of mergers and the processes involved. We provide a list of these in the study guide. These resources vary in depth and detail, but most provide a similar step-by-step -step approach to investigating and undertaking a merger. Typically, step one is identifying the characteristics of the type of organisations that would be most suitable. Research is then conducted by the board, CEO or consultants to identify suitable candidates. Just as an aside, this is one of the few areas in which mergers of for-profits and not-for-profits are quite different. In the for-profit sector, there are brokers such as investment bankers who research markets and bring organisations together to make deals. This doesn't happen as much in the not-for-profit sector as there is no profit generated, or at least not so much to attract matchmakers. As such, the initiative to create a merger is usually from the organisations themselves. Anyway, when one or more potential merger partners is identified, the next step is usually for a member of the board or CEO to invite their counterpart from the target organisation to a casual meeting to identify any interest. If there is interest from both sides, each board would be notified and asked to support the initial process of merger. Initial activities and a time frame would be agreed. At this point, the structure of the merger is also agreed, that is, will one entity be dissolved and the assets transferred into another, or will both entities be dissolved and a new entity established, or even other structures that might be used. From here, typically the next step is the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, that enables due diligence to be undertaken. If the due diligence process concludes that the merger will achieve the desired benefits and the boards agree to proceed, then the transaction progresses to the beginning of the merger process. This usually means the preparation of a deed of merger. If one or more of the merging entities is an incorporated association, then it may need to get a majority vote from members, and this can be tricky. The deed of merger outlines the governance structure for the merger. This can include both boards or a single committee comprising members of both. It will also address agreements on branding, communication, integration preparation, transfer of property, etc., and outline the timetable for these. When this is signed, the merger is underway. Once any preparations or requirements on both sides are complete, the merger enters the process of settlement. From this point on, the process of integration commences. Integration can take many months or years, depending on the agreement and the size of the organisations. For the merger to achieve productivity gains, there are usually staff redundancies and recruitment to be managed, organisation restructuring, IT integration and a wide range of other tasks. As mentioned earlier, in a merger at least one organisation will lose all or most of its autonomy and this can be hard to accept. The merger process can also take longer and be more costly to achieve than expected and there are risks that the merger entity will not achieve the outcomes that were hoped for. One of the key tips from those involved in mergers is that they are fundamentally about people and not lose sight of this when focusing on the business issues. If you get the human elements right, the rest will be easier to complete. We'll look at these and other issues in a few minutes. While they are complex and difficult, there are many examples of successful mergers, and many of today's largest and most respected organisations are the result of mergers. Clearly, with 7% of organisations reporting they have been involved in a merger in the last two years, there is a lot of merger activity going on.